when it comes to uh, my career, what defines my career, uh, I tell people that I've never considered myself a celebrity because I played with celebrities like Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, and, and, and Stan Musial, and, and these were great celebrities. To me, a celebrity is a person that can't go into a restaurant and eat without people coming up and asking for his autograph. So, so I, I've never really had that problem too much, you know. Uh, and that would people would recognize me like on immediately on the streets. And I think one of the reasons why is because we play baseball to win. I mean, that's that's the reason we play. And we go to spring training. We want to win the pennant. You know, this this is the this is the dream. This is the hope of every player. And uh, unfortunately, I was not on any pennant winner. You know, or uh, and so far as the big publicity is concerned, the big publicity in baseball, it it, it is tied to winning, like a a pennant, or being. Uh, a great pitcher, a 20-game winner over consecutive years, uh, many, many years, like Robin Roberts uh, won 20 games for the Philadelphia Phillies, even though they didn't win any pennants or anything. But but he was very recognizable uh, person. Or a hitter that hits a lot of home runs and most valuable players and, and things, and this ro really high-profile uh, type players. And relief pitchers in those days weren't what we call high profile. And and so one thing that I probably helped contribute to the game uh, is concerning relief pitching. And I was among uh, the pioneers of relief pitching. Not that they didn't have good relief pitchers before me and before uh, some of my uh, contemporary uh, at that time uh, relief pitchers, but uh, but beginning with myself and Elroy Face with the Pittsburgh Pirates and Hoyt Wilhelm and Paranoski and people like that, and I was fortunate to have won the first Fireman Award in 1960 with the Cardinals, which which was my best year uh, by far actually, and. Uh, so relief pitching became recognized then as a very important aspect of the game. And since that time, it uh, has become more and more specialized and more and more important because uh, starting pitchers today will seldom go more than six or seven innings, you know, and complete games, there's not that many complete games anymore where a starting pitcher will go... And, and pitch nine innings like there used to be. And I remember in the time of Robert Roberts, you know, he was going to pitch a complete game every time he went out, just about. Even if he if he won uh, seven to six or something like that, he would, would stay in the game, you know, and pitch a complete game. And that's kind of the way it was, uh, you know, way back then. And now it's uh, it's it's much more specialized, and so they have they have relief pitchers today even uh, that specialize in getting left-handed hitters out, or specialize in getting right-handed hitters out, or specialize in going into the seventh inning and the, the eighth inning and the ninth inning, and and uh, the stopper in the bullpen, or the one that only comes in the game if you got a win, uh, a lead in the in the ninth inning, you know. And uh, and and so so it's 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 really uh, ch changed a lot in that respect. We've been talking about relief pitching, and, and of course that was my uh, specialty. And a lot of people, uh, what is a relief pitcher? You know, uh, he is he is one that comes into the ball game uh, to. Uh, Basically, what I did was in my in my prime, I would come in from the bullpen, usually with a lead, and in many tied ball games as well, because I think I'm number two lifetime in 
wins for a relief pitcher. And if that happens, you have to be in a lot of tied ball games for uh, you to actually pick up a win. But what you want to do is pick up a save and save the game for the starting pitcher. And uh, in my day, I would come in maybe and pitch two or three innings uh, to pick up a save. Whereas today, you know, you pitch one inning or just part of an inning to, to pick up a save, what they call a save. And to get the fireman award, uh, that is a combination of wins and saves. And the total uh, points that you get for that would determine whether or not you win the fireman award in the National League or the American League. They, they always give two, two every year, uh, in one in both leagues. And so I, I won it for the National League in 1960 and 1963. And, and so that was, that was kind of my unique contribution, I would say, uh, to the game and kind of a forerunner to the modern relief uh, staff that they have, that every club has today. Uh, and, and also uh, mention uh, the fact that, you know, when I started out, uh, we didn't even travel by plane. We traveled by train, you know, and that's really going back 1956, 57, uh, and, uh, I think 58 we started flying, but uh, it was by train in those days. And, uh, and so <laughs> that, was, that was kind of an interesting time too, uh, uh, where we would uh, travel from St. Louis to Cincinnati and to Chicago and see St. Louis was the furthest team west. And so all the other teams, uh, would be close enough where you could get there on a train uh, easily enough the next day to play. And it was pretty interesting because uh, we we stayed uh, in, in on the train in these roomettes on the train. And actually, uh, what happened is you pulled the bed down from the from the side of this little room on the train and and the whole length was only six foot see i'm six three and so my head would hit my feet would hit you know it was never very comfortable and uh if you had to uh, get up in the middle of the night you had to you had a sliding door right there on the side you had to open that up and then there's a curtain. You could back out in the curtain and pull your, put your bed up <laughs> in the wall, and, and then you put it back down. And and, and plus, it, if it's a night game, you get on the train after the night game, and now you travel to the next city. Well, you get there if it's from St. Louis to Cincinnati, for example. You you'd get there, and it'd be six or seven o'clock in the morning. So now you got to uh, get dressed, you know, and everything, and get your bag and at the terminal, and and get a taxi that takes you to the to the hotel, and then you would finish your sleep. <laughs> so so it was just you know crazy uh, in those days, you know, traveling uh, by train. And of course when when the teams moved to the West Coast, you had the Dodgers and the Giants. The Dodgers moved to LA and Los Angeles, the Giants moved to San Francisco. And then we started traveling by plane, you know, all over uh, the country at that time. And so, so just think about the transportation changes that uh, over my career and how it is today and, and and so many, uh, so many changes that that I can think about. I think I did play at a unique time, uh, what they call uh, the the glory days of the game, and these were the days of uh, like Stan Musial and Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays and Ted Williams and a lot of those great players, and uh, it was more uh, like for fun. Uh, we weren't making real high salaries, you know. Uh, Stan Musial maybe made a hundred thousand dollars, but he was a top salaried uh, person, and and 
and Willie Mays, and, and they, they would make something like that. And But uh, other players wouldn't be making much money. But it was uh, a time when we had much closer contact with the fans. And usually we had to park our cars outside the stadium and then work our way through the fans after the game. So we were signing autographs all the time, you know, with the fans. And... Uh, we just had much more direct contact, and we would sign for free, you know. Uh, and whereas today, like uh, Yankee Stadium today, the player will come into a, a special entry into the stadium, uh, total security, he has a password, goes inside and parks, and, and he's able to walk right th through his uh, clubhouse. And... Uh, he doesn't really come into contact with the fans after the game or before the game. And the only time he has direct contact with the fans, you know, he could be out on the field and hear the fans in the stands, of course, uh, rooting and, and all that. But uh, the only time you have an, an actual contact is, is certain uh, events that you would have that players would attend. And, uh, and they make it a, a contact thing, very controlled. But none of that was controlled much uh, during my time. And when I first signed my first contract, I joined the club, the St. Louis Cardinals in Chicago. And, uh, and I went to Wrigley Field early uh, from the ballpark, fr from the hotel where we stayed. I took a taxi, went to the ballpark, and uh, I started to walk into the front of the stadium, and all these kids started coming from everywhere, you know. I want your autograph, autograph. <laughs> and I said, what is this? <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't, why do these kids want my autograph? So, so you start signing autographs, you know. And, uh, and then after the game, when I was playing for the Cubs, after the game, our cars were parked just in regular parking. And it was a special parking lot, but it wasn't fenced in. It wasn't, you know, protected. And so when we would leave the ballpark and go to our car, uh, the kids would come from everywhere, you know. And uh, I remember one year we had a bunch of, uh, of round sticker c cards that had cub on it. And we'd sign our name on these cards. There'd be hundreds of cards that you had put in a little stack, you know, and, and you could stick them on, you, you peel off the back and you could stick them on anything, you know, and we'd sign sign those. And I remember we'd, we'd sign a bunch of them in the clubhouse and then we would get out toward our car and here come the kids and we'd just throw them up in the air like confetti, you know, just throw them in. <laughs> And the kids would scramble to get these signed little things, and uh, we would get in our car and take off. <laughs> so, so uh, that was that was is, is, is kind of different. Uh, the game is so much different today than uh, in in some of those days.